very good morning if moments before you would have asked me you need one mic i would have given you i had plenty of them thank you uh, joshila and jesse for reading us the bible scripture children that was wonderful it just made uh, our christmas much more better much more colorful much more joyful and we thank god for that so uh, we as a family it's been our pleasure to be uh, here uh, during the last two weeks and we had one of the best time of our lives uh, being part of your life and you have touched uh, our lives in many many ways uh, and it was a joy to to visit you uh, a joy to uh, step out with you to go for carol singing um, and 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 again coming here in the church and practicing well i learned one thing uh, i think linda taught us right uh, merry merry christmas happy and happy happy new year <laughs> well this was our anthem that kept us awake right up till morning 6 o'clock indeed uh, shanti can you give me a clicker please and praveen if you can change this ppt to the second one today is a very special day we are celebrating christmas the birth of lord jesus christ symbolically not 25th of december because my father in law is there and he says it well the time of christmas is a great joy and it present numerous opportunities for us as christians to go out and share the love of the lord and the reason for this great joy is very personal to individuals and families and at the same time it's very public in the life of church and in the world the thing is the joy of christmas it touches every sphere of our society every family every church every community has a special tradition for christmas we as a family also have one what we do is uh, for the uh, pre evening the christmas uh, pre evening we will love to spend time together as a family have dinner pray uh, and if the time permits we used to watch our favorite movie it's wonderful life and the very next day we'll get up go attend church service and then invite uh, some of the bachelors who would not be able to present with their families for lunch and post lunch we'll open the gift with them uh, they were kept below the tree uh, and just have a good time so and i'm sure like we have one tradition every family and every church has a tradition of its own right because the joy of christmas sometimes does not stay within the bounds of our loved ones we have seen many individual many churches many organization step out and share that joy with the world with the less fortunate ones so you see celebration and sharing go hand in hand and today i would like to talk about celebration in sharing now if i if i have to ask you what do we celebrate and what do we share during the christmas season well during the christmas season the relational aspect of humanity is at its peak the thing is no one wants to be alone during this season we want to be with our loved one we want to connect with someone we just want to be with someone during this season yeah and the world is exactly doing the same if you look around people are going for parties people are calling their friends their families for dinner yeah some people are stepping out uh, with with the meals with the gifts and sharing the joy with the the, the ones who cannot have you know in one way or other the world is celebrating christmas by being together being together even during the last 10 days we had multiple occasions of coming together like last night we men come together we were supposed to go off by 10 o'clock and then after 11:30 every wife i think called it and we were forced to go back home okay so that that was it you know but what is happening is when you look around the way the world is celebrating the christmas sadly uh, christ is no more part of that celebration you know the main context 
and when christ is not part of the celebration the main context of sharing joy and love is also missed as a result what happened it becomes sharing by the human out of their own goodness and abundance so people go out and share because they have something extra to share not because it is fueled by christ to do so and that is where the world out there is celebrating they are coming together in one way or other but unfortunately christ is not present so then how do we celebrate christmas properly so that we can share celebrate the right christ of christmas and i have uh, the one way of doing it is by reflecting back and looking forward while being firmly rooted in the present and what i mean by that is that we celebrate christmas by reflecting back at what god has done to fulfill his promise through the birth of jesus and what he will do we look forward in seeing what he will do to bring out his promise of his righteous and peaceful kingdom a reality in the future while being firmly rooted in what he is doing in our lives and in the lives of the world it has to have these three concepts together if you want to celebrate christmas properly the three has aspect has to come together because the centrality of christmas is about hope and today we will be seeing the three aspect of hope first is reflecting back and uh, as joshil read from revelation i want to take it to ezekiel now you know god make a covenant of peace with his people israel it was an everlasting covenant he wanted to bless them he wanted to be with them he wanted to establish his resting place among his people and he wanted to bless them but what has happened israel was lost to sin and the laws were unable to get them back justified with god there was a problem there was a problem in fulfillment of god's promise because there was a sin and god had to do something drastic to save his beloved humanity by redeeming and reconciling them to himself and how god has done it god has done fulfilled his promise through what he has told to the prophets by sending the messiah the redeemer the king the prophet the son emmanuel the rock the wondrous advisor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace by the birth of jesus christ and this was the message which me and pastor, uh, pastor praveen were sharing every house we were working god fulfilled his promise through jesus by sending him as our everything you see through christmas god has rolled out his plan to redeem humanity with himself by entering into time and space and coming to earth as one of us he came as one of us now jesus being one of us he was not like us he was without sin in his incarnated nature he was divine and human representing humanity in his relationship with god he reestablished our relationship with god by being our mediator through his life he exposed and gave us an entry point to the very triune life of god he shared with us the very nature and character of our god you see and through his action on the cross he lifted the entire humanity to be with god through him by the spirit and that gave us a chance to respond back to god's call to be in union with him forever so you see through christ life we see his birth god fulfilled the promise to be with us forever emmanuel through his life god revealed his heart and the very nature of father through his death 
he has reconciled the entire humanity with God. Through his resurrection, God showed that we will be resurrected too. And through his ascension, we are assured of being with our triune God in the new heaven and new earth. So on this Christmas day, we see fulfillment of God's promise of sending the Savior and Redeemer in the form of Jesus. And we take strength in this hope which was fulfilled in the past. And with that fuel, we look forward in anticipation to Christ's second coming. So, the hope which was fulfilled in the past fuels our present and our future. And with that strength, we look forward. So, looking forward, what do we do? You see, throughout the season of Advent, we look back into what God has fulfilled in the past and we look forward to what he will do in the coming days. That is the fulfillment of his kingdom. A kingdom which is perfect. Righteousness, justice, peace, where there will be no evil will be destroyed forever and we'll have perfect communion and union with our Father and with each other forever. But what has happened living in this world has damaged our image of hope. We somehow developed a very distorted hope. That's a real hope for us, but in a sense that is distorted. Let me share with you how it is. You see, those of us who are struggling to manage through the day, we just think somehow that God should provide us enough to get through the day. For us, a hope is a financial strength. Somehow, if God managed finances, I am okay. That's, 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 some of us just look forward to that. Well, those of us who are having health issues and our lives being limited by those problems, we feel or we hope that God provides us a healthy life where nothing limits us. So for us, a hope is a healthy life. See, now those of us who are suffering from broken relationship or broken families. For us, we want to be reconciled with our loved ones. And somehow that's the only hope we have. Those of us who come from a lower strata or from the lower caste, we want to be treated equal. We wanted to have equal access to everything. And somehow, unfortunately, sometimes, these differences are even seen in the churches. So for us, the hope is getting an equal treatment. And for those of us who have come from a violence-affected family or from a society or history, we just hope for a peace. The problem itself is not wrong, but somehow we are so much in those problems that for us, even if God sought out one of the uh, challenge for us, that is hope. But God is not saying that this is the only hope he will give. He's, his hope is a complete hope. His hope is a complete hope. The future in Christ is going to be complete hope in all aspects. Now, what do I mean complete hope in all aspects? We... So uh, we read in Revelations, yeah, and I want to just uh, read verse 4. He will wipe all tears from their eyes, and there will be no more death, no more suffering, no more crying, no more pain. All these things are things of past. Things are gone forever. That means we will have a hope of a future which where we will have everything we need. The provision of God will make everything right. We'll have perfect bodies, no sickness. We'll have perfect relationship with God and with each other. Everyone will be treated with equality, with rights, with respect and with love. And the kingdom of God will be ruled with justice, righteousness and peace. That's the complete hope we look forward to. So on this Christmas day, 
as we fuel our hope by the promise God has fulfilled in the past, we look forward to this hope where we'll have a complete hope in Christ Jesus when he'll come and he'll establish his kingdom. The third aspect is living in the present. Now, God did not reveal his nature through Christ, sent him to redeem us so that only we have a hope for future. No. God has also given us hope for present scenario. And as uh, Praveen has said, it's the fuel, the hope for present is a fuel for the hope for the future. Because he gives us hope for our present circumstances. The Christ of Christmas provides us hope in our present times too. And how does he do that? Revelation, redemption and reconciliation. Now, Jesus has revealed the very nature and purpose of God to reconcile humanity back to him through his finished work on the cross by the Spirit. And now, that is our biggest source of hope that we can respond into that call and be with God. We can enjoy that relationship with God again. So, through reconciliation, when we respond to the call of reconciliation, we are invited to participate in the very triune life of God. Now, through this reconciliation and redemption, God wants to fulfill his promise of eternal relationship and his presence with us. And he has done that and we have read it in multiple Bible references. So, on this Christmas day, I want you to be assured and aware of his presence and you and within you, around you, in our lives. He is very much present. That's the biggest hope we have. Second thing is, God is telling us that our past is forgiven. He doesn't see us through the lenses of our deeds, of our social status, of our caste, of our brokenness, of our failure. Instead, he look at us through his grace as his beloved children. That's a hope that the Christ whom we love, he looked at, he looked at us as his beloved children. Not who I am, no, not how much failure I am, not how much successful I am, not how much broken I am as the world sees. And as you see, take confidence on this Christmas day. And put on the same lenses as you receive from God. Try to see others through the same lenses. See people without these uh, brokenness as the beloved child of God. The third. Now, well, this does not mean that um, there will be no problem. There will be no suffering or persecution. There will be as long as we are on the earth. But the promise he is giving us that he will be with us. Throughout the process, he will carry us. He will hold us in his hand. And that's a promise we have. And that's the promise on this Christmas day we need to share with others. That he is with us, the Emmanuel. Now, he also blesses us to be the better version of ourselves. He blesses through the gifts and talents. He enlarges our territory and he makes us blessing to others. Just look at back and how many times God has used you to be a blessing to others. And from there then today, he's just enlarging our territory. So you see, in Christ, our hope of past, future and present is fulfilled. Now, when you see that hope that Christ has fulfilled, which was the hope of our past, hope of our future and present. Is any one of you today hearing this call from God to be reconciled back to him? Or any one of you have heard this call before, but you have not responded? Today, I would like to encourage you. Tell God, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I want to be united with you. I want to be reconciled back with you. I want to enjoy your communion and meet any one of us pastors later the service and we would love to help you out and for those of us who have accepted his call 
to be reconciled back to him, to be united with him. He asked to be, he asked us to remain in constant communion with us and with everyone through the act of holy communion. You see, the very act of holy communion is a remembrance of what Christ has done in the past, what he is doing in present, and what he is going to do in the future by the Spirit. That's a confidence we have when we approach to the table of Holy Communion. It is an act of remembrance that it is a gift from God. No matter what we can do, we can never be justified in our relationship with God. It is through the work of Christ. It is an act of celebration that through Christ, by the Spirit, we have this chance of relationship with God. A perfect and a right relationship with God and a right relationship with everyone. Because when we have your vertical correct, it reflects to your horizontal relationship. So today on this special day of Christmas, we don't see Christ's birth as a single event, but we see his entire life. His birth, his life, his death, his resurrection and his ascension as one. And one way of celebrating Christmas is partaking in communion, which reminds us that through Christ by the Spirit, we are justified in our relationship with God. Our Abba Father, we are united in Christ. And that's a remembrance I want us to have as we celebrate Christmas. As you look back to what God has fulfilled, as you look forward to what God will fulfill, let's remain strong in Him through the act of Holy Communion. Now, for those of you who have accepted God's call of reconciliation and responded back to be united with Christ, I would like all of you who would like to uh, take part in the communion to raise on your feet. We'll take the communion together. And those of you who would like to know more about getting united with Christ, please meet uh, any of the pastors and we would help you uh, in your process. I need, I'll now read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 onwards. Uh, and then I'll say and we'll partake it together. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread, which is Christ's body broken for us. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake in the cup, which is the new covenant and Christ's blood. So as we conclude our, our message for today, remember that it is through Christmas that God has entered into time and space, coming to earth as one of us, revealing the very nature and character of God and appealing us to turn back from our ways and be united with him by sharing the hope that he will always remain with us. So, it is this Christ of Christmas who in the past became incarnated human and reconciled humanity with God. It is the Christ of Christmas who will establish the kingdom of righteousness, peace and justice in the new heaven and new earth. It is this Christ of Christmas who through his very Holy Spirit, who through his very Spirit 
will remain present in our lives, being with us in our hurt, in our failures, in our illness, in our brokenness, giving us support to carry on. It is this Christ of Christmas, the very source of our hope, the very source of our hope that need to be shared with everyone. Just how the angels have shared with the lowly shepherds. It is this Christ of Christmas who need to be present of our sharing joy, love, gifts, ministry, our resources, our money, our everything. He has to be center of it as we share. It is this Christ of Christmas that we need to celebrate every day of our lives. And as we as we go from here and celebrate Christmas with our loved ones in the very tradition that you have established within your own homes or families or extended families, I want to uh, share the word from Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 and it says, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So on this Christmas day, yeah, this is the holy day of the Lord. And as you celebrate, share with those who are not capable of having everything that you have. And on this Christmas day, I would like to bless you all from Apostle Paul's blessing to the Christians in the church of Ephesus. From Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. I pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. His holy people who are rich and glorious inheritance. I wish you all a blessed Christmas.